I always make the same joke every year. I say, Jesus grows up so fast, doesn't he? <laughs> Last week he was just a little baby. And now he's all grown up getting baptized. <laughs> and, uh, well, today we are in the first Sunday after the Epiphany, in the season of Epiphany. And it's also known as the Baptism of Our Lord. So we celebrate this every year. If anyone were going to be baptized today would be a particularly good day for it. <laughs> uh, the word epiphany itself is a realization, a revelation, or if you like Oprah, an aha moment. Um, so why is this story considered an epiphany? It's always a good thing to ask. Well, Jesus is the Messiah, God's son, and he doesn't need really to be baptized in the traditional sense of baptism because baptism back then was primarily about getting cleansed from your sins and today we kind of treat it more like a membership thing membership ritual since we tend to baptize babies more than adults but since jesus is the son of god and according to our own traditions he had no sin what was the point of baptizing him at all? There's many, many thousands of books on this. But anyway, here in this context, his baptism is in front of a crowd. So it is a big epiphany. He goes into the river, and then when he comes out, the spirit of God in the form of a dove comes down, and the voice says, This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. So this is a big revelation, a big epiphany. Not necessarily for Jesus, because he knew that, but to everybody else. So in that sense, the baptism could be considered a commissioning type story, the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. And this is different from our baptisms, because here God identifies Jesus as God's agent in the world. This is my son. And Jesus got baptized on earth. And when we get baptized, we get baptized into him, which is slightly different. But there are similarities. We still baptize ourselves in public. Um, some of you might have had a private baptism. Anyone, anyone remember getting baptized? That's always a question I ask. I was three months old, so. Oh, you did. Okay. Oh, okay, great. I was baptized in a private service. Um, as was the custom in the 1928 prayer book, even though it was 1980, and the rules had changed. So uh, in 1979, the rules changed. Baptisms are supposed to be done in public unless there's a special circumstance. So I was a troublemaker right from the start anyway. And while baptism does wash away sin, um, I always think it's weird that a little baby has any sin. It's a very Middle Ages idea. Our church doesn't really do original sin anymore. So we think of baptism kind of as an initiation into the community of Christ, at least for a baby. <clears throat> and it's the start of a person's journey in their life of Christ, the beginning of their own ministry, because even a little child can have a ministry. And Jesus' baptism today is not just a washing of sin, but it comes with these words from God, words of empowering grace spoken aloud for them all to hear. And then we also hear them for us, because we are also God's beloved children, with whom God is well pleased. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> and that's a message that we need to hear in life, I think. Um, we forget sometimes, because we live in this consumer culture, right? All the time, we're bombarded with the idea that we're not smart enough, or thin enough, or if we buy whatever thing, all our wrinkles will be gone, and we'll be gorgeous, or whatever, you know. I have regular TV, so I see all those ads. But God has already declared here, that we are enough just as we are. God accepts us and desires for us to do wonderful th things in the world. 
and to work through us in the world. And this is part of why baptism is such a large part of our faith tradition. But for a lot of people, baptism ends when, after the water gets poured. <laughs> My former boss, Father Rick, always told this joke. If you know Father Rick, this is a very Father Rick joke. The curate came to the rector and said, there's all these raccoons in the attic and I can't get them out. And the rector says, just baptize them. You'll never see them again. <laughs> There's always some truth in these jokes, right? But I don't know why it kind of doesn't mean a lot to people anymore. It should be the beginning of our ministry and the beginning of our witness to Christ in the world. And Christ's baptism isn't the only epiphany we have today. We have one from Peter in Acts. Peter is at the house of Cornelius, a Roman soldier who's a Gentile, in the city of Caesarea Maritima. Okay. This would have been a big no-no probably back then for him to go to this dinner party at a Gentile's house. But Peter has his epiphany. He says, I truly understand that God shows no partiality in every nation. Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This was a big Chain, like difference in thought, especially for Peter. Peter's always a little slow on the uptake on these lessons from Jesus. <laughs> Jesus told him that a lot of times, but he just finally realized it in this story today. <laughs> That's why we love Peter. God has shown find, through that all people, no matter your background, no matter what you've ever done, no matter where you've ever been, you are accepted. Peter gets it. He realizes that he's with this Roman soldier, someone he probably shouldn't really be friends with, but that God arranged it so that he could spread the news of Jesus in the world. And he's bearing witness. And so that is what we are also to do, bear witness. The word witness can kind of scare people off. It's a little loaded sometimes. We think of, I do anyway, the street preachers yelling on the corner with the signs or whatever, or the people on TV. But that's not what witness is for everyone. Everyone has their own type of witness. Everyone has their own style. Christ was baptized in front of the crowds so that they would see it and that they would share. And they told their friends, and they told their friends, and then it eventually got written down, and we're still reading it today. <laughs> and Peter shares what he experienced personally with his friends. That wasn't in public, that was in a, in a house. And they remembered it and wrote it down. He's not, you know, doing a big speech in front of a large auditorium. He's just sharing something that happened to him with his friends. And that's witnessing as well sharing our experience of God in the world to others. And we're called to do this through our baptisms. That's why we do it in front of people, but also so that we will continue to share all of our blessings with others. Now, everyone has their epiphany moments. Mine are usually at like three in the morning. And sometimes later when I think about it, maybe they weren't so great, <laughs> but <laughs> how do you bear witness to your epiphanies. You share them with the world in whatever way you're comfortable doing. All we can ever do is just tell people our own experiences. We can't speak for others. And a lot of people tell me they're shy about talking about faith, specifically with me, because I have the degree that's in Latin. I don't speak Latin but my degree is in Latin, the diploma, I mean. <laughs> and I have the collar, which is plastic. But it's fine, it doesn't matter. You speak to your own experiences. It doesn't matter what your training is, what your experiences are. You just speak on your own experience of God in the world. We all have the ability 
to see God's work in the world. And we all have the various tools to share it with other people. Nobody has all the answers. Anyone who tells you they know everything or not being truthful. <laughs> and there aren't any hard and fast answers about God until we meet God. We're not going to know. All we can really do is share what we've experienced and know that we are enough as we are. That we are God's beloved children with whom God is very well pleased. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.